Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden. Somehow now it's April and things are looking really, really amazing. Um, so I've been really excited to show you around today. Um, probably the highlight is the tulips. So we decided to start up here. Um, you can see this side is just appearing at the moment. And um, these ones I just planted in winter. Um, so they haven't been in for very long, hence flowering slightly later. Whereas the other side, um, they've been in for a really long time and they're just going over. So on this side, we have mostly um, design impression. There are a few random bulbs that must have snuck in accidentally because I definitely didn't buy them. But for the most part, they are design impression. Um, and my plan with these is to leave them in. So once they've finished flowering, I will deadhead them, give them a bit of food and uh, keep my fingers crossed that they come back next year. Um, you can see this is the same tulip here that's been in the ground for about three years and the size is amazing. Um, people say that tulips tend to get smaller each year but if anything these maybe have got bigger um, so that was why I wanted to add more of them. And then on this side um, I think these ones are red impression and those are the ones that I accidentally got instead of design impression a few years ago and haven't pulled out. Um, and things have changed quite a bit since uh, we last showed you round. And in my previous video, I was telling you that I don't like these and I want to pull them out and you guys should hold me accountable for doing that. Um, but I've kind of changed my mind once again. Um, and I think the minute the colours soften and they're not that bright red, I do actually really enjoy them and I want to leave them in. Um, and it feels so wasteful pulling out that many tulips, especially when you know that they're going to come back every year. So I think I will leave them in, not 100% sure. Um, but my other reason for doing so is because I've got two really, really exciting projects that I can't quite tell you about. Um, but it basically means I need to keep the garden looking as good as possible for the next few weeks while we're getting those projects sorted. Um, and then after that, I can hopefully tell you about them. But they're really, really, really exciting. And I've gone from being quite relaxed about how the garden looks this year to suddenly panicking and, and trying to get everything in shape. So all of the things that I told you I was too lazy to do, like cleaning the greenhouse and the shed, I've started doing those. <laughs> um, and I'm feeling a bit worn out because the last few days I've spent a good few hours out here. Um, but everything looks really lovely and I think this is probably my favourite time of year um, between now and the next few weeks. And we've got all of our blossom um, along this part of the garden is currently flowering. It's actually starting to go over now. Um, it doesn't flower for very long and it's been really windy here this week. So the blossom has been falling really quickly, but I think that's quite nice. It looks like confetti and it falls all over the grass and it looks really nice. Um, so the blossom that you can see around us is um, plum trees, and these were here when we moved in. Um, we thought we lost one of them last year in the storm, but it looks like it's come back really well. Um, if anything, it's just had a hard prune, but the top completely fell off um, and it has regrown and it's flowering now. So hopefully that one will be fine. Um, we still have a bit more blossom to come out in the orchard at the top of the garden and that area is a bit colder and a bit more exposed um, so it does tend to take a little longer maybe in the next week or two we'll be seeing that but i'm really happy with how everything's looking um, i think one thing that i'm a little bit disappointed with is in this bed i was hoping we'd have more forget-me-nots about now um, last year we had a kind of a good sea of them but we don't have very many and I wonder if it's because I did quite a thick leaf mulch on this area maybe smothered the seedlings that would usually overwinter there are a few so they might get better over the coming weeks but we just have to wait and see um, but next I will show you the mini meadow because that's currently looking really lovely so under the oak tree here is the mini meadow um, and this is something that I've been showing you each video and it hasn't quite um, been at its best but I think now it probably is um, so we've got most of the snakes head fritillaries that are going to flower I think have and I'm really pleased because there's one white one and um, when I planted these in autumn it said they were a mix so there should be a few more white ones but um, mostly it's purple. I think I added it was either 25 or 50. I don't think we've got a flower from every single bulb but um, hopefully as the years go on these will only spread and they'll start to clump and we'll have a few more flowers but I already feel like this is something I just really really love and it's definitely something I'm going to be adding more of when it comes to autumn so I've got that on my list um, and then we've got these lovely daffodils in the middle and these are called Pueblo. Um, there are actually slightly fewer flowers on those than I expected compared to previous years. I don't know if we're gonna have a few more as the weeks go by. Um, last year they did flower a bit later than this and there are a few sort of probably smaller bulbs that have sent up leaves but so far haven't sent any flowers. So I'm hoping 
we will get a few more flowers on those and this area might look a little bit better but i don't think the snake's head fritillaries are going to hang around for much longer some of them are starting to crisp up now um, but I really love this area and you can see the primroses are doing amazing as usual and they'll probably continue to self-seed and move around um, because we don't mow this lawn until probably June time. Um, but yeah, I just love this area and I think the view with this little mini meadow looking down at the cottage is one of my favourite things. And probably crocus time is my favourite time in the year, but this is a close second, I think. Um, one thing that I failed at this year was adding woodland anemones to this area. And I don't know why, maybe the bulbs were too dry. Um, I did pre-soak them um, and I think I planted about 50 again, but there are only two that have flowered. So I don't know where the others went, um, but it's something I really want to try again with. And I've heard that um, they're quite slow to spread naturally, so it's good to add loads. Perhaps I'll add them in the green instead of planting them in autumn. Um, We've also got bluebells coming up now, um, some that have gotten up here. I don't know how, I didn't plant them to my knowledge, um, but they will spread quite quickly, I would imagine, because they're the Spanish variety. They tend to spread a bit faster than the English variety. Um, and we've got a few more patches of those popping up everywhere. But overall, I just think this is an amazing time for bulbs and most of our bulbs are in flower at the moment. I'll show you the progress on my cutting tulip patch. It's a little bit behind, but you can see that soon we'll be expecting flowers on that too. So here we are at the cutting patch. Um, we've got a few that are just about to appear, but not quite ready yet. So I'm reckoning maybe another couple of weeks and this will look amazing. Um, I probably won't cut them and bring them into the house. I never really get around to doing it, but um, they're just varieties that I think would look nice in a vase. So I'm really excited to see these flower. And then you might remember from our last video, um, I was clearing out the bed behind us and um, I asked for your advice on what you think I should plant there. And he had some really, really nice ideas and it was very hard to decide what to put in. Um, I did, I was really keen on putting some Japanese anemones in this bed and the variety I wanted to put in was wild swan. Um, I went to the garden centre and they didn't have any so I've still left most of it empty but I have added five small geranium plants because I think that will give us some good ground cover um, especially as this area starts to get shady when this um, tree puts its leaves on. Um, so I'm still thinking probably Japanese anemones, um, but a lot of you were keen on doing a herb garden, which I think was also a really nice idea. Um, I think it will also be amazing to add some spring bulbs to this bed. Again, I'm not quite sure what, but it should be something that comes back every year just to be lower maintenance. So maybe I'll put some daffodils in or maybe some more snakes head fritillaries. Um, Still happy to hear your advice on that one because I'm completely unsure about what bulbs to put in this bed. Um, but I'm really happy with how this area is coming along. And the other thing I've noticed is um, I've sent this rambling rose up the plum tree and this one's called Rambling Rector. And it has loads and loads of white flowers, small white flowers that will appear in summer. Um, and the idea is that once the tree has finished blossoming, um, you'll kind of have a similar effect again in summer when the rose flowers, because they're quite small and white, they look similar to the blossom. And it's put on so much growth. I think it's about two and a half meters tall already. Um, and this is its first year in the garden. So I'm really looking forward to seeing if that flowers this year and how much coverage we get from it. Um, I just, I will have to be careful that it doesn't completely overcrowd the trees, but there are two, I don't know if that's one tree, but it's kind of split into three big trunks. Um, so it will have space to scramble up. I might have to take some of the ivy off so it doesn't have too much going on, but just need to be careful that it doesn't get too swamped because um, it came with a warning about how fast it grows. But that will be exciting to see this year. And um, it's quite nice having a rose in the garden that will put on that much growth in one year because the other ones that we've got are a little bit slow and it feels like you have to um, wait quite a long time to get that delayed gratification of the flowers. But next I can show you a bit in our greenhouse and polytunnel um, because those are starting to fill with seed and the food that we're going to be growing this year. And in the small greenhouse, um, I have started cleaning it in here. Last time I told you I wasn't going to, um, but because of the things that we've got going on, I've decided to try and make it a bit more presentable. Obviously haven't finished yet, it's still a bit messy, um, but we'll get there, um, hopefully. Just wanted to show you how some of our seedlings are doing, um, the ones that we've moved up from the house into the greenhouse, um, which is most of them now. So we've got our purple sprouting broccoli, um, we've got Cavolo Nero, sorry, not Cavolo Nero, um, Romanesco cauliflower, which I desperately need to get in the ground because the plants are getting way too big for these tiny modules that they're in. Um, 
hollyhocks that I grew from seed. They're looking really lovely and um, getting to be a good size and the roots are starting to show out the bottom of the pot. Um, and then the um, cup and saucer vines. I think I ought to get these in the ground soon. I'm, I'm worried it's slightly too cold um, because they aren't frost hardy at all. They're getting really big. <laughs> um, and I don't know what I'm going to do with the others. I've got so many. I gave one to my mother-in-law and she's going to grow it at her allotment. Um, I've still got one, two, three, four, five, and they are huge. Um, I'll probably only need one at this rate to cover one of the arches in the vegetable garden. Maybe two at a push, but they are another thing I need to get in the ground. Um, this time of year is just a bit chaotic because you're sort of sowing your seedlings like squashes and the kind of late spring, early summer seedlings. Um, trying to manage all of the ones from the house and get them used to being in the garden and then planting out the bigger ones in the ground. It's a bit chaotic <laughs> and I feel like the greenhouse kind of summarises that quite well. Um, but there are so many things in here that are really exciting to grow and um, just again lots to look forward to. Um, in the raised bed we've got shallots. This perennial kale is doing amazingly. It's so happy in this greenhouse and I think this will be a really good place for it because it's not too hot in here. We do get some shade from the trees behind us in the summer um, so hopefully it won't get singed. And then we've got a few brassicas that I added as well because I didn't have space for them. Not sure what they are. I think they might be um, all year round cauliflower. Um, in some kind of seed model this year, I'm probably growing about 60 cauliflower plants. So don't know how we're going to eat that, that um, much cauliflower, but um, it's all fun. It's just, it is what it is. Um, but that is the small greenhouse. And finally, I can start showing you around the polytunnel because there's a little bit more life in here now. Um, I don't usually show you the tunnel over winter because I don't really grow much in here. Um, I tend to use it for things like tomatoes and aubergines and the things that really love a hot, a hot growing space. Um, but I have got a good mix of things in here at the moment. And uh, we also got this um, potting table from Facebook Marketplace and amazingly it was free and it's perfect for our seedlings and really handy because it came with this sink as well um, and perfectly um, designed to fit under our tap that we already had plumbed in so this has been really useful so far and it used to be in an old pottery studio and I think they would wash their hands and keep their clay on this but it works amazingly in the polytunnel um, so on here I've got my seedlings that I'm sort of hardening off um, and getting them ready to go in the ground once I've um, arrange the space properly. Um, I've got some aubergines out here and some cucumbers, some cavolo nero, cosmos, leeks, chamomile and chard which is looking very leggy. Um, I might have to redo the chard but I think I'll try and pot it on and just plant it really deeply um, but it's not looking great to be honest. Um, I've also got some verbascum plants which I am um, starting from seed just in the interest of saving money um, but those hopefully will be a perennial. I know it's a mixed packet and some of them are and some of them aren't so it's a little bit of a gamble and then um, on the bottom shelf we've got Jerusalem artichokes and although there's nothing above the soil yet you can see that these are rooting quite aggressively in the pots and um, in this case even changing the shape of it by um, pushing their roots out so much. Um, these are going to go in the vegetable garden after I've harvested the garlic I need to wait for that bed to get free um, once I've done the garlic and they will have to stay in their pots for a bit longer. Judging by how quickly they're putting roots out, I don't think they're going to love it. Um, so hopefully they can hang on until summer um, once we've got the garlic out and got the bed ready for them. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. I might have to pot them on into a bigger pot, but they are known for being quite aggressive and you're supposed to grow them in a constrained space so they don't take over. I'm trying to do the tunnel in a kind of permaculture model this year and I'm not trying to plant things in neat groups I'm trying to mix and match where possible so I've got things like broad beans and peas um, I've got some garlic some cavolo nero um, and some lettuce and the other thing I wanted to do in the tunnel was add some um, perennial plants or things that are going to stay in here year on year um, to help with the soil structure and have those permanent roots down. So I have this goji berry bush in here um, and this is looking amazing. Um, I think I put this one in last year and I bought them in a pack of six and it was a bit too many for me. Um, I haven't had any flowers from them 
I think they might be a summer flowering plant, but correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't grown them before. But this is just something that was quite novel to me. I've never grown goji berries before um, and I'm just excited to see what happens. Um, so that's that. And then we also have cucumbers that I've put in the ground. It's possibly a little bit too early to have them in the ground, but um, I completely ran out of space. So they're in there whether we like it or not. And if we get a frost, I'll have to cover them. Um, but the nights are quite warm now and hopefully they should be okay. And then the other thing I've added in here is a dwarf cherry tree and my reasoning for that was because the cherry trees that we've got in the orchard are so big it's impossible to cover them and then the birds eat the fruit. So I thought if I put a dwarf one in here it's near the door it can get pollinated and um, I should be able to harvest the fruit because I don't think birds will come in but if they do it's small enough that I can net it easily. Um, so that's where the polytunnel is up to at the moment. I've got my tomatoes out here hardening off as well um, so hopefully won't be long until they're in the ground they do need to get a bit bigger they're still quite tiny um, but lots to look forward to and loads of plans with um, what food we're going to be growing this year and it's still just an exciting time and a time to kind of get things together and get the plan going. This mess here is my dahlias that I left in the ground. Um, I'm not expecting them to have survived the winter even though I mulched them with um, loads of straw and a curtain and some plant pots. I just didn't have time to dig them out over winter but we had such a cold winter. A lot of my hardy but not extremely hardy plants have actually died which is really really gutting. Um, last year I was really interested in growing tree mallows so I think I added about six and really lovely big sized plants and um, now that everything's coming back to life and those aren't I can see which things have died I think I also lost a gunnera plant which was really sad that was something I bought last year and they just couldn't cope with how cold our winter was it was unusually cold so um, not expecting great things from the dahlias but if they are still there then that's a massive win um, I will quickly show you the vegetable garden now so you can see how things are out there so in the veg garden it's a similar story, everything's waking up. Um, a few things that I wanted to show you are the plants that I'm growing to cover these um, arches and they are coming back to life and putting on new growth so I'm really excited to see um, how much of these arches we're going to get covered because these have been in for about three years and it's taking us ages to get things big enough to cover them. Um, so we've got this um, Clematis, I can't remember the variety but I might be able to work it out once it's flowering and starting to come back to life and um, hopefully we'll grow this to about here um, and keep it pruned sort of reasonably short. Um, and then on the other side we've got a rose um, and this rose is tiny because I grew it from a cutting so it's less than um, two years since I took the cutting um, but considering that it is getting quite tall um, so excited to see that one um, continue to grow this year and I bought from the garden centre a kiwi plant um, it's called Jenny and it's a variety that doesn't need a male plant to produce fruit so we only need the one plant which is really good and yesterday I planted that against the other arch there and then we've also got a rose called Eden on the other side um, and Eden's one that I'm really excited to grow. Um, I know it's quite popular in the States and I'm in a few rose groups on Facebook and it's one that people always share and people say look how amazing the flowers are and as soon as I saw it I just knew I really wanted to grow that rose. So that one went in last year. Didn't see any flowers from it last year so I'm hoping this year we will. Um, let me know if you grow that one though, I think it's... Uh, so lovely and I can't wait to see what that one looks like. I've sown a few carrots in the only space we've got but beyond that everything's taken up with perennial vegetables now. Um, so we've got the asparagus coming to life, strawberries are coming back, perennial onions, perennial kale, um, just everything's getting really good and lovely and taking up a lot of space in this garden. So once we've exhausted the space here and the polytunnel's full everything else will be going to Aaron's allotment which he's starting to take care of. So things like potatoes, cauliflowers, um, just anything we don't have space for here, he's gonna grow over there. And then hopefully we should have a really good kind of supply of food, um, which is something that we're building up. Not necessarily to be self-sufficient, but just because it's fun um, and we like doing it and it feels really rewarding. I won't show you the orchard because there's not much going on there. Um, the daffodils are kind of finishing and the blossom hasn't quite come out yet. It's quite close to flowering, um, so I would say next week I might show you the orchard and you can see the blossom on the apple trees and the pear tree, um, which is always a really, really nice time, but we're just a little bit too early for it now. But I think 
that's more or less everything that's going on in the garden. Um, it's a really lovely time and just great for tulips and other spring bulbs. I hope you enjoyed having a look around and if you'd like to watch our cottage garden develop over the months and years, be sure to give us a subscribe and we'll see you next time.